So this is the uh, blue and white garage. This is where the uh, Who Are These Guys slideshow is going to be happening on, on October 1st. I was able to secure um, this venue from the owner. He's been kind enough to, well, it's a bit of a mess right now. But anyways, we're going to try and find these guys. And I guess put some chairs over there. And then hopefully put a projector over there. But... I guess today's an interesting day because, well, Sharuk's here, obviously, that's cool. Michel Barrett's there. Dale Jarrett's made it. Alice Cooper's head is there. But I've got a, I got a story to tell. And, well, I'll just, maybe I'll just sit down in, in that appropriately placed chair and tell you the story. This story is of a, a promise I've tried to make good on. A few years back, I was at a garage sale in Kennedy, Saskatchewan, just down the road from Kipling, Saskatchewan, which is, as you know, many uh, many of you know, a place where I, I lived for some time with Dom. And I got a book. I found a book there called um, Zack in Action. Now, it's a Saved by the Bell book, number 15 in the series, and, well, Zack is at it again. I thought I'd maybe read you a chapter, see how it goes. Zack in Action. To all the Saved by the Bell fans who have ever had romance troubles. That's nice. Here we go, chapter one. Ding! Lunch! Butch Henderson sang out. The fullback of Bayside High Tigers leaned his head back on his beefy neck and bellowed like a moose, calling his sweetie from across the frozen tundra. Mr. Sandusky looked over his glasses. I think we all heard the bell, Mr. Henderson, he said mildly. Class dismissed. You may now tie on your feed bags. A.C. Slater sighed as he closed his math book. He trailed behind the rest of the students as they picked up knapsacks and books and hurried out of the classroom. Once upon a time, Slater would have been leading the pack. Lunch used to be his favorite subject at Bayside High. He lived for the chance to scarf down lasagna in the noisy cafeteria while he joked about the latest hot gossip with his pals. But when you were the latest hot gossip, lunch was no picnic. Slater slowly headed for the cafeteria. He had known from the beginning that falling for Kelly Kapowski wasn't his most brilliant move. She was his best friend's ex-girlfriend, after all. But Slater had underestimated how dating Kelly could change all his friends. The gang had always been tight. Both Zach Morris angry with Slater, and Slater's ex-girlfriend, Jesse, angry with Kelly, and Zach mooning over Kelly, and Jesse sighing over Slater, things were one big mess. Slater swung in, into the cafeteria and spotted the gang at their usual table. It was Monday, and he knew what the topic of conversation would be. The weekend. He knew what was going to happen. He and Kelly would squirm and stammer and try to change the subject, because that weekend they'd had their most romantic date ever. Greetings, guys, Slater said, dropping his knapsack on an empty chair. Hey, Slater, Samuel Screech Powers greeted him. His frizzy curls looked extra springy today next to his polka dot t-shirt and striped suspenders. The special today is your favorite, tortilla casserole. It looked great, Lisa Turtle said, a mournful expression in her dark brown eyes. But I'm on a diet. The fool... Moon Madness Masquerade Ball at the Country Club is coming up, and I have to fit into a very tight costume. I'm going as Catwoman. She picked up her fork and gloomily slabbed, stabbed a piece of lettuce. Hi, Slater, Kelly said. Her deep blue eyes sparkled as she, saw, she shot Slater a special smile. Hi, Kelly, Slater said. Zach Morris looked up. He wished his submarine sandwich came equipped with torpedoes. He wished his best friend didn't have an incredibly muscular body and dimples as deep as the Grand Canyon. He wished he'd never lost Kelly Kapowski. And he'd wished he'd ace a midterm just once. But this was real life, so he chomped down his sandwich and pretended that it was Slater's head. Jessie Spano looked up from her book long enough to nod hello at Slater. He caught only a glint of hazel as her, eyebrows, her eyelashes lowered and she bent back over her book. Slater didn't push it. He knew that Jesse still wasn't over his dating Kelly. He hadn't been going out with Jesse when he'd asked Kelly out, but Jesse considered that fact irrelevant. They'd been dating on and off for so long that Jesse couldn't help thinking of him as hers. Slater dropped into his seat with a crash. I brought my lunch today, he said, unwrapping his tuna salad sandwich. 
Tuna salad? Lisa asked, looking over. Since when do you eat tuna, Slater? You're a meat and potatoes guy. Slater shift, shifted uncomfortably. Kelly had made him the sandwich that morning when he dropped by to pick her up for school. It was her favorite tuna salad recipe, and she had looked so cute in her gingham apron that he'd sworn tuna was his new favorite thing to eat for lunch. I'm trying to improve my eating habits, he said defensively, and took a big bite. Red peppers and capers, Lisa said, studying the sandwich. That looks like your special recipe, Kelly. Lisa's words hung in the air. Jesse fiercely flipped over a page, almost ripping it in two. Zach took a savage bite out of his sandwich. Lisa wished she could stick one of her pink cotton socks in her mouth, even if she had just bought them on sale. She just wasn't used to tension between her friends. Except for Slater. They had all been together since kindergarten. Before, if someone had had a fight with someone else, they'd usually made up the same day. This tension had been going on for weeks now. So, um, what was everybody up to this weekend? Lisa asked in a too bright voice. I was at the mall. What did I miss? Lisa considered shopping a competitive sport, and she. <laughs> Lisa considered shopping a competitive sport, and she rarely missed training. I had a fantastic weekend, Screech said. I wrote a new program for my computer. I had a term paper to do, Jesse said, and I played pool with Melissa Alden and some of her friends. Jeremy and Greg were there. They were a riot. She, saw, she shot a look at Slater, but he was concentrating on his sandwich. She'd hoped the mention of two cute boys would make him just the teeniest bit jealous, but it looked as though it made him more hungry. How about you, Zach? Screech asked. Zach pretended that he was still chewing. He hadn't done anything over the weekend. Without Kelly, there was nothing he wanted to do. He didn't even want to date. This situation was totally and completely uncool. He took a big sip of soda. Then he waggled his eyebrows mysteriously and summoned up the naughty twinkle in his hazel eyes that was his trademark. The usual, he said. Whoa, Lisa teased. I know what that means. Screech nodded sagely. Rented some movies, huh? Zack crunched down on a potato chip. What was the matter with Screech? Sure, everybody was probably, probably perfectly aware of the fact that he was sitting around pining away over Kelly, but did the curly-headed dweeboid have to remind them all the time? So what did you do, Kelly? Lisa asked. Well, Kelly said, let's see. I helped my mom do some homework Saturday afternoon. Sunday I went to church in the morning, and then we had waffles for brunch. Sunday afternoon, I had a shift at the yogurt for you, and what about Saturday night, Lisa asked, forking up a bite of salad. That's the crucial night of the weekend. Did you guys see a good movie or anything? No, Kelly said. We just uh, had dinner out. Cool, Lisa said. Where? Cafe Romantique, Kelly said in a small voice. Wow, Lisa breathed. Did you get one of those tables in the corner overlooking the ocean? Kelly nodded. Jeff took me there once, Kelly said dreamily. It's the most romantic restaurant I've ever been in. The pink tablecloths and the candlelight and the moon rising over the ocean. Did you walk barefoot on the beach afterward? Kelly nodded. Her cheeks were tinged with pink. Um, yes. That is so romantic. Lisa suddenly stopped. Now she knew she should shove her shock into her mouth. Both of them. Jessie was staring down at her, at her book, her face red. And Zach looked like he was chewing on nails, not a sandwich. It was kind of cold, Kelly said quickly. We had to build a fire, Slater said. Then he gulped. Maybe he shouldn't have added that detail. It only made the evening sound even more romantic. But it had been romantic. Kelly had looked so beautiful with her firelight dancing. With, with the firelight dancing on her sleek dark hair and lighting up her deep blue eyes. Still, maybe they should have said they'd gone to the library and been home by 9 o'clock. Zach choked on his soda. Jesse pounded him on the back. Dessert, he choked out. Love some, Jesse said grimly. The two of them walked towards the cafeteria line. Do you believe them? Jesse snarled. It's Romeo and Juliet all over again. Frankie and Johnny, Fred and Wilma, Barney and Betty, Mildred and Newton. Who are Mildred and Newton? Zach asked, picking up a pack of chocolate chip cookies. My next door neighbors, Jesse wailed. They've been married for 43 years. Relax, Jessie, Zack said, handing her the, her the cookies. Have some dessert. I don't want any, Jessie sniffed. How can I eat when my heart is breaking? Just consider it 
Just consider it your just desserts, Zack suggested as he grabbed a piece of chocolate cake. Very funny, Zack, Jesse said. I'll let you know when I start laughing. I mean it, Jesse, Zack said as he paid for their food. Let's face it, we got what we deserved. We took Slater and Kelly for granted. We plotted behind their backs. I even tried to date another girl. What did I do? Jesse asked. I was loyal and honest. Let's see, Zack said, stopping and tapping a finger on his cheek. There was the time you drained all the oil from his car and burned out his engine. And the time you almost married that guy, Raymond, so he could get a green card. And the time you kept on trying to prove your mom's boyfriend was a crook, even though Slater asked you not to. Okay, okay, Jesse cried. So I made some mistakes. But I love Slater, Zach. Doesn't that count for anything? And I love Kelly, Zach said. I'm hoping it counts for a lot. I want to win them back. Jesse eyed Zach, hopefully. I see a gleam in those eyes, pal. Are you coming up with a famous Morris scam? Not yet, Zach said, but I will. Until then, we have to hang tough. But we'll get them back again somehow. Or my name isn't Melvin Nudrucker. Jesse couldn't help giggling. You sure know how to inspire confidence. When they approached the table, Screech was leaning back in his chair, smiling happily at Slater and Kelly. Now that's the way to keep the romance in a relationship, he said. In my experience with Nanny, I know there's no better way to a girl's heart than with a candlelit dinner, of course. He amended quickly. It does help if you don't set the tablecloth on fire. Lisa giggled. Or have the fire department and you ruin your girlfriend's carpet. Screech waved his hand. Nanny understands. She's the perfect girlfriend. And that's why we're perfectly happy. But Screech, you didn't even see her this weekend. Kelly pointed out. Didn't you say you worked on your computer? Screech nodded. Yes, but Nanny understands. When was the last time you went out with Nanny, Screech? Lisa asked curiously. Screech frowned. Well, let's see. Maybe it was last Wednesday. No, last Wednesday she had a Bayside Beacon meeting. Last Sunday afternoon? No, she had to visit her grandmother. Hmm, he shrugged. It doesn't matter, we're both busy. But I'm telling you, Nanny understands. Here comes Nanny now, Kelly said. She looks pretty happy. Screech straightened his suspenders. You see? The magic never ends, Nanny, he said, standing up. I'm so glad to see... Hi, Screech, Nanny said briskly. She turned to the girls. Listen, I've had the most fabu idea, girls. I was talking to Phyllis Potowski last night, and she was complaining about not having anyone new to date. So I said, why don't you go after Tony Berlando? because he broke up with Melissa Alden a month ago. And she said, no way. She didn't even know Tony that well because he's in the band and she has a tin ear. So anyways, I had this great idea. Nanny paused dramatically. I'm going to throw a bring your old boyfriend barbecue. What's that? Kelly asked. I'm inviting all the girls I know, Nanny explained. And I'm asking each of them to bring an old boyfriend as a date. Then, at the party, Everyone can mix and match. Who knows? We could start some new romances. That sounds like a great idea, Lisa said enthusiastically. But how will I be able to choose which boyfriend to bring? I have so many old boyfriends. How about Cal Everhart, Nanny suggested. Didn't you date him a couple months ago? Perfect, Lisa agreed. And Kelly, you can bring Zach. Jesse, you can bring Slater. Who are you bringing, Nanny? Kelly asked. Nanny grinned. Screech, of course. Screech, are you free Friday night? Uh, Screech gulped. I, I, uh, great, Nanny said. Now I'd better run. I've got a zillion girls to talk to. Nanny dashed off, and Screech stared after her, his mouth open. He was Nanny's old boyfriend? How was it possible? Gosh, Screech, Kelly said, breaking her silence. I'm really sorry. Screech nodded. He had a lump in his throat, and he couldn't talk. It looked like Nanny hadn't understood. She hadn't understood at all. So that wraps up Chapter 1 of Zack in Action. Uh, tune in next week for Chapter 2. And I just can't wait to see Zack back in action. Hopefully it happens in Chapter 2.